Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our, our webinar on Healthy Start. My name is Lindsay. Um, I'm here in London, based at Sustain. I'm going to be um, helping host the webinar this morning. Um, so I'm just going to start with a few logistic things. Um, first, um, I'd just like to make sure everyone can hear me. So if you can hear me on the left-hand side of your screen, you should see an attendee chat. Um, those of you who have joined us before um, with webinars, you should know where this is. Um, it's over on the left, so if you can just type in where you're listening from so we can get a sense of where everyone is. Um, it's just kind of fun to hear um, or fun to see where you are. So if you can hear me, where are you hearing from? So we've got Oxford, Shropshire, hi, Emily, London, hi, <laughs> Great Plymouth, oh my gosh, Stockport, Luton, Stoke. On Trent, London, Glasgow. Great. Okay, we've got a huge spread from across the UK. Fantastic. Great to have you all with us. Um, this is proving to be a very popular webinar, so um, glad that there's such interest in Healthy Start. Um, just to let you know, there's two ways when you're listening to a webinar to ask a question um, or to interact since we don't have a video feature or a speaking feature for people who are listening in. The best way to do it is to type something into the attendee chat and then we can see your question and everyone else can also see your question. The other way you can do it is up on the um, top of your screen, there's a place where it says, ask the presenter a question. You can ask us a question that way if you'd like, but then it'll only be private between the presenters and yourself. So we suggest if it is a question that other people might benefit to hear the answer from, we, um, it's best if you can do it in the attendee chat. Um, in terms of the agenda, we're starting with um, a quick overview of Healthy Start vouchers. Then we're gonna move on to Dr. Helen Crawley talking about where are we now. Then we'll hear from two case studies, one in Birmingham and one in Leicester City um, about what work they've done. Then we'll move into a time for Q&A. And so during that, um, that's when we'll ask people to do the majority of their questions. But if you have anything that comes up during one of the presentations, feel free to put it in the attendee chat and we'll save it for later or someone can try to answer it while we're going along. Just to let you know, also the webinar will be recorded and it'll be available on our website after um, today, probably tomorrow. Um, and all of our other webinars um, from the past year are available to listen to and watch the presentations as well. Um, also, just to say that um, I'm not an expert on Healthy Start, but I'm helping facilitate this webinar. So hopefully we can get as much expertise from people who are listening in as well as the speakers and we can get all of our questions answered. So um, before we go into the content, I just wanted to do a quick overview for those who are new um, about what is food power and what is sustainable food cities or who are we and what do we do exactly. So um, food power is a program that started about a year ago and our aim is to focus on tackling the root causes of food poverty by working with local alliances. By local alliances, we just mean partnerships of people who are coming together um, in different areas that are committed to working on these issues related to food poverty. We have around 45 partnerships who have joined so far. Um, and one of the things that they're working on is increasing the uptake of Healthy Start vouchers. In addition to webinars like this, we also run a peer mentoring scheme, offer financial support, host a national conference and other things. Um, I'd suggest checking out our website um, to find out a bit more about that. It's a program that's four years long and it's run by Sustain, the Alliance for Better Food and farming and with, in partnership with Church Action on Poverty. And we are funded by um, the Big Lottery. Sustainable Food Cities, um, who we're co-hosting the webinar with, um, also has around 50 members across the UK, each of which are cross-sector partnerships committed to improving the food sector locally through their own unique food strategies and action plans. SFC members follow a common framework of six key issues, which can be adapted to fit the local context. And one of these six key issues is food poverty. The SFC model of working was kind of part of the inspiration for food power. And about 25 of the areas that are members of SFC are, have also joined food power. Um, this year, the Sustainable Food City campaign, their flagship campaign is called Veg Cities, which is a part of the wider Peace Please initiative. And that's all focused on getting um, more people to eat more vegetables. So all this to say, we've got a lot of people throughout the UK in different areas who are 
um, focused on increasing the consumption of vegetables and, and tackling food poverty. And so Healthy Start is incredibly relevant to everyone in both of our networks, um, as it's one of the key ways for people on a low income to access nutrition food, nutritious food, including vegetables. Um, judging by kind of looking through the list of people who joined the webinar today, I think most people know the basics of what Healthy Start is. But just to review, it's vouchers of three pounds 10 per week for pregnant women and children who are under four years old. There's two vouchers available per week for um, kids who are under one year. It can be spent on milk, plain, fresh, or frozen fruit and vegetables, and infant formula milk. Um, it can be used at any participating participa participating retailer, um, and that can include corner shops, green grocers, food co-ops, market stalls, pharmacies, supermarkets, anyone who's selling the foods that are you're allowed to purchase. Um, it can be more than one voucher per family. So for um, a woman who's pregnant, it could be up to twelve forty per month. But if she also had children, it could be more for each of the additional children who are eligible. Um, and the idea is that it's meant to be a means-tested nutritional safety net that encourages healthy eating. Um, their website has a really helpful one-page info sheet to, that can be printed. Um, and it's a, quite an easy way um, to hand out more information to retailers. So sometimes um, what we've discovered in working in this area is that some people um, can mix up Healthy Start vitamins with Healthy Start vouchers and that are the Healthy Start vouchers we're talking about today. And just wanted to be clear that these are separate things. So you don't need to use the Healthy Start vouchers that you can buy the food with for the vitamins. It's um, a separate scheme. Also to make note that um, as a part of devolution, um, Scotland is proposing a new welfare foods package. Um, and this will be called Best Start, which would be replacing Health Start. It would still have the same idea as Healthy Start. Um, but there might be some slight changes that they're proposing. For example, they're talking about increasing the amount of up to 425 per week. They're considering changing some of the eligibility criteria, um, including allowing um, up to 610 pounds per month of income if you're on universal credit. Um, it would still have two vouchers for children who are under one year. And they're also thinking of allowing the vouchers to be used on tinned fruit and vegetables as well as tinned and dried pulses and eggs. They're also talking about a um, digitizing the service a bit and making it into a smart card. Um, so it's we've yet to see what will come out of the consultation and the proposals, but there are talk of a lot of these things in Scotland. Um, we also know that as a part of the childhood obesity strategy, um, there is meant to soon be a UK government consultation on Healthy Start. We think it'll be this autumn. Um, and there's also a sense that um, there might be exploring the smart card idea UK wide um, as the Department of Health and Social Care is about to start beta testing a pilot for digitizing Healthy Start with a few of the London boroughs. So moving on to eligibility. My screen just went blank. Oh, here we go. Um, uh, I just took this from the website of Healthy Start just to reiterate what sort of eligibility is currently um, allowed. So you can be on income support or income-based job seekers allowance or income-related employment and support allowance, child tax credit, and with universe of with a family income up to around sixteen thousand pounds or less per year, and with universal credit. You can, you're eligible if you have a family take home pay of 408 pounds or less per month. This is causing, um, we, as we've been hearing from the groups we work with, this is causing a bit of confusion because 408 pounds or less per month is quite a bit different than 16,000 or less per year. And so as it's rolled out, it's um, still a bit to be determined what will happen with universal credit. But as it stands, this is the current eligibility requirement. Um, I'm going to now hand over to Helen, um, who's going to talk a bit more about the history and what, um, what the scene is now. So I just wanted to start with that very basic intro, as I think our presenters have a lot more to add. So over to you, Helen. 
Great, thanks, Maddie. Um, I hope everything can, everyone can hear me all right. I still seem to have the longest running early summer, early autumn cold that is on record, but um, I hope I'm not too stuffed up. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what we've summarised about Healthy Start since its inception in 2006. Uh, we've written all this up in a report that everyone can access. And we did it specifically, particularly to, to, to link into this consultation, which we very much hope will be starting this autumn. But as far as we know, we still don't have a, a date for that as yet. Um, so I work at First Steps Nutrition Trust, um, and we cover all sorts of areas about nutrition from preconception to five. Um, so as Maddie has explained, we all know what Healthy Start is. Uh, it's been a scheme that we've had that replaced the old Milk Tokens Welfare Food Scheme in 2006. Uh, it's had a bit of a, a slow uh, development over time in that it was pretty much ignored, I would say, for many of the first years. It served about 700,000 households. Uh, had a budget of more than 100 million when it was first uh, envisaged it was supposed to be 140 million i don't think it ever spent that realistically um what we've been looking at is quite what's happened since um this is looking at beneficiaries uh we don't have really good data realistically before 2011 um but if we look at the data from then on you can see that uh there's been pretty major uh, deterioration in the number of people who are eligible. Uh, that apparently is due to changes in the benefits system, meaning more people are uh, unlikely to reach the thresholds, um, but obviously a huge decline. Um, at the same time, as many of us know, we've had a major increase in the number of food insecure families in this country and certainly no reduction, particularly in the number of uh, families in need at that stage. Um, if you look at this chart, this looks at both the numbers who are eligible and those who are eligible who take up the scheme. Um, and this is a slightly more shocking response, really, showing that uh, from what used to be around about 80 percent uptake, we've slipped to 66 percent. That was at the beginning of this year. Um, I think it will probably have gone down more this year because we're hearing of quite major difficulties in the Healthy Start issuing unit uh, in uh, working with DWP uh, around forms. Um, but that means that a substantial number of people who are eligible are not taking up um, the benefit that they're entitled to. Um, and that means that there's about 40 odd million pounds not going out to families uh, within the budget as it stands, which is pretty shocking overall. Um, there's also been, of course, huge differences across the country, and this has probably always been the case. Um, but uh, work shows that 80% is a is a very good target to have for uptake. Um, some areas do manage slightly more than that, but many areas of the country manage a lot less than that. Um, there are some slight uh, similarities in areas where there's more people eligible, um, but certainly work could be done in a lot of areas to increase uptake, I think, quite rapidly. Um, there's also been some differences in redemption rates as well. They haven't gone down quite so much, but still another slight decline. Um, it was very hard to get information on spend of Healthy Start. This is actually a calculation that we've made based on the food vouchers and the uh, uptake and um, redemption rates, which shows a pretty steep decline in terms of the amount of government spend on Healthy Start vouchers between 2011 and 2018. Um, people could interpret the data differently. That's one way we've been trying to show uh, how it might have changed. Um, we know lots of other things about the scheme. There's quite a lot in our report that's all quite different. Um, one of the particular problems seems to be that young eligible pregnant women, so every pregnant woman under the age of 18 is eligible for Healthy Start, regardless of their uh, income. Um, and we don't think many of those women are taking up the benefit. Uh, we know that about a third of applications are rejected because the forms are not filled out correctly. It's a form that has boxes on it, and if you write outside the lines, by all accounts, it gets rejected. Um, we know that promotion of the scheme has been inconsistent across the country, with some areas doing some really amazing work, but perhaps other areas not taking it on board. Um, and of course, right from the beginning, when the, the scheme was first planned, there had been uh, a training program set up for health professionals, which never got rolled out. Um, and so we never had a good starting point uh, at the beginning of the scheme for everyone to understand uh, how they should work as health professionals when they have to sign the scheme, sign the form for the scheme and help people to move forwards. Um, 
It's interesting as well in that this is the sort of held up quite often as a flagship scheme by by ministers and others talking about what they do to support the population. We've never had any proper annual reporting of the scheme about what it's doing and whether it's achieving its goals. Um, we've had some evaluations, some scientific evaluations. They've been mostly qualitative. Um, and they certainly haven't been able to get to the nub of whether this scheme is effective in meeting the goals it was set up to achieve. Um, there's always been issues around uptake of vitamins. Very difficult to quantify how many people are taking them up. Obviously, in some areas of the country, they are free universally or part universally so that all pregnant women or families with young children would get them regardless of income. Um, and in some areas, coupons may not have been returned to the Department of Health and Social Care. So we've always known that it's difficult to know what's going on with the vitamins. <clears throat> And one of the other things, of course, that the, the scheme was set up to be was to be a safety net for families who use infant formula to feed their infant. Um, and the cost of infant formula has rocketed since 2006. And so it certainly doesn't now actually provide the cost for um, a family using infant formula. So it's not acting as a safety net for those families. Um, so in our report, we've looked at all of the areas uh, that we think need a bit of work on Healthy Start. Uh, these are all the different areas that we've covered and I can't go through all of the different uh, recommendations that we've made as there's about 55 of them. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the recommendations that we think would be relevant to individual areas in terms of really trying to um, change what's happening in the local area. Um, one of the ideas that's come out of several of the evaluations was that actually Healthy Start needs a guardian. Um, and this idea of a guardian is actually being used in other areas of public health as well. So somebody who's pretty senior who will say, I will be responsible for this scheme, I'm really trying to make sure it's across health and social care and public health um, and who has to report in um, to make sure that the scheme is being used properly locally. Um, setting targets of about 80% uptake is a good idea. Uh, that has been set for London as part of the uh, currently draft London food strategy, but hopefully soon will be the London food strategy. Um, and that's really nice to have that commitment from the mayor that will be pushing for that in London boroughs. Um, we think the particular work needs to happen around young pregnant women. Um, in some areas, they will have family nurse partnerships, um, hopefully could work better to try and link up with Healthy Start. Um, but certainly, again, we need a target for those young pregnant women um, because they're really missing out at the moment. And as some of you will know, there are particular issues about pregnancy uh, in younger women um, and a particular need to have better nutritional support at that stage. Um, in terms of local Healthy Start promotion, um, one of the problems we often seem to come across when we talk to people about Healthy Start is that people still don't know about it. Um, I've heard of people saying that the Citizens Advice Bureau didn't know about it or that they didn't have the forms in the Children's Centre or whatever. Um, and one of the things that seems to work well is to have a real blanket uh, availability of the forms and the packs um, across all those areas where women may go when they're pregnant or where for young families might go. Um, and there's all sorts of ideas that people have suggested. Um, certainly where you can work with faith groups, community groups and cultural centres um, where people may not have English as a first language to help for support with filling the forms in, that can be really useful. Um, and certainly I think it's that idea that everybody will mention it uh, at some point. Obviously the form has to be signed currently by a health professional, uh, but all they are doing by signing the form is saying that somebody is pregnant or that they have a child under the age of four. They're certainly not saying that they're eligible in terms of their income. So there's no reason at all why health professionals can't sign forms for everybody. And then it's up to them to decide if they want to apply. And the DWP decides on eligibility. So that the health professionals are not gatekeepers for the scheme. But we have heard that some of them feel that they may be. Um, and certainly, uh, we certainly believe the forms should be available in other than English. Um, we certainly know that some of the groups where they may be missing out on the benefit are from our BME groups. Um, so certainly thinking about how we can help with uh, filling the forms in and um, being aware of the scheme is important. Um, and I think hopefully, and I'm sure this is something that everybody who's linked into sustainable food cities and to food power will be thinking about. We need to make sure that Healthy Start is really signposted in any of those food, local food poverty action plans or food strategies that people are working on. 
um, and also work around maximizing family incomes because <clears throat> I think that's really important that we see this as money that can really help that uh, those households out in terms of the food that they're able to buy. Um, and certainly at the moment we're we're seeing some really really interesting public health initiatives so things like the veg cities project coming up the peace please project um so where you're linking into those it's good to think about how you can also join that up with healthy start and supporting those families who are eligible to the vouchers um and certainly there's a few things as well around retailers um a majority of the vouchers are currently spent in the large supermarkets realistically um but it's an ideal opportunity for people to try and think how other local food projects or farmers markets or social pantries could link together to accept healthy start food vouchers. Um, there's always been an idea as well that retailers could perhaps offer special promotions to the value of a voucher. At the moment, of course, you have to spend all your voucher at once. There's no change. Um, the digitization scheme would aim to give you a card where you could spend it in portions of that amount, and that could certainly change. Um, a slight worry about the digitization program that it might make it harder to link your healthy start with local food projects if they don't have the technology to use that card. Um, but certainly, um, we're going to hear in a minute from areas where they have done a lot of proactive engaging with local retailers and food markets. And those are really good uh, examples, I think, of what people can do and should be doing overall. Um, so if you want to find out any more background information about Healthy Start, our uh, report, What Happened, What Next, is available on our website. Um, and it's a summary of the whole history of Healthy Start, really, and where we've ended up. Um, and as a charity, we also do a practical guide which shows families how they can use the foods that they could buy with their vouchers uh, in low cost, uh, effective, yeah, easy to cook meals, which might be useful. Um, and I'm going to be here. So if there's any questions I can maybe answer, I'll happily try and do that. But I'm going to pass on to Sandra, who's going to talk to us about what's happened in Birmingham. Thanks, Helen. Um, Helen, before you um, mute yourself, can we just ask you really quickly, there was two questions about who can sign off the forms. Um, can staff at children's centres sign the forms? No, not currently. Currently, it has to be a GP, a health visitor or a midwife. Okay, great. I just thought that was a quick and easy one for you to answer before we, we switch over. Thanks, Helen. Okay, um, now we'll just go over to Sandra. Hello, um, it's Sandra Passmore here from uh, Birmingham. It's very interesting listening to uh, Helen's talk because uh, until I had an idea about what she was talking about, but it's really useful to see what she talked about. Um, actually, we've done independently from the first start um, sort of an evaluation and assessment of Birmingham and I was going through thinking yep yeah, we've done that we've done that oh that's a good idea um, so my role is slightly different is I work for two people I work for services for education which is an educational charity based in Birmingham we used to be part of the local authority until as you all know the changes with the local authorities happened so we're now an educational charity so we work uh, particularly around uh, teaching and learning, but safeguarding healthy lifestyles, PSHE, with the 0 to 25s. But because of my particular interest and background and experience in nutrition, I now work one day a week with um, public health, um, at back, who are now in the Birmingham City Council, and particularly lead around um, healthy start vouchers and childhood obesity. So that's um, where I'm coming from. So Birmingham, if uh, you haven't had the pleasure of coming to Birmingham, it's quite a large city. Um, and also one of the things about Birmingham that probably makes it slightly different, it's a very young city. So actually uh, we have 46% of our residents are aged under 30. And so actually that also means that we have a lot of births and a lot of children. It's also quite a deprived city and it's also quite a multi-racial city. So it's a large mixed city uh, with lots of children, lots of births and um, some of those problems that we have uh, with that arise from that. So when we started looking at Healthy Start vouchers uh, in Birmingham, our approximate registration rate is about 70%. So, you know, Overall, that looks pretty good. We're above average. And for once, above average is a good thing in Birmingham. It doesn't always apply. But you think, oh, 70 percent. Yeah, that's not too bad until actually you do what I did, which is actually go, well, how many people is that? And, you know, we know that it's worth three pound ten a week. 
than actually if you're a pregnant woman with a child aged under one and one or more children aged under four, you could potentially have up to four, five, six vouchers a week. But we just based it on two vouchers per week per person. And so I sat down and did this basic calculation, go, how much is the underclaim worth for our city? And actually, that's where you get the figure of £1.6 million pounds per year for the city. And actually, it could be far more than that. But we've gone on that basis. And when you start thinking, this is money that should be in the pockets of some of the poorest people who actually then tend to spend it in the local retailers and Birmingham economy could do with that boost as well as the individuals that actually um, that's when we started going, oh, hang on a minute, we need to do something about it. And then it also uh, coincided once we started doing a little bit more work around it and I started talking to people, this confusion with the Healthy Start Vitamins. And because Healthy Start Vitamins are something that's monitored by, uh, it's one of the key performance indicators with um, public health. When I was talking to people in public health and I was talking to the health visitors and I would be talking about the Healthy Start vouchers, they would then start talking about the vitamins. And actually you go, well, why is this confusion? And it's because uh, no one monitors the system. So the health visitors or midwife register the woman. And there is also this issue, you get registered when you're pregnant, but then you have to register again after the baby's born. So people who register when they're pregnant think it'll carry on, but no, you've got to re-register. And then of course the woman, and it could be the parent, but it's generally the woman receives the voucher. She then needs to find a shop that accepts the voucher. And, you know, there's no publicity about that. Go to the shop to spend the voucher and then the shop claims the money back. So there's no overall monitoring of the system. Um, we did start to do this work um, because we are linked into the Peace Please pledge that um, Helen mentioned. And so it's one of our pledges as, um, as the city. We're one of the veg cities. We're one of the original pledges. So actually, it does tie into a lot of the work that we want to do around Birmingham. So what we did, myself, uh, uh, public health lead and the assistant director of public health, we sat down one morning and go, OK, what is this journey? And it's a, you know, it's a jargonistic term. But actually, you know, if you're a woman who's pregnant, who do you actually have contact with? You know, you have a contact with the midwife, but who else? And then post birth, who does primarily the woman, but actually either of the parents, who do they have contact with? Who could actually start to increase the um, the um, the social norm around applying for this uh, um, benefit? And then we think, well, actually, if you're a little independent retailer, how would you actually know about registering and why? And would you even know your shop is registered? How do you promote and all of those sorts of things? So we tried to just tease out some of the, that information. So we came up with an action plan that's got these four key areas there, which is actually, first of all, we want to increase the number of people who are eligible to actually register for um, the, the vouchers, the Healthy Start vouchers. And then we actually want the people who are receiving the vouchers to use them because we know that it, not everyone uses them. But actually, in order to use them, we need to increase the number of retailers who are registered and will accept the Healthy Start vouchers. Um, and so actually, the, you know, there's no problem about you could go, you know, my vision, my idea would be that you could go into any shop anywhere in Birmingham, hand over the Healthy Start voucher, and they would know about it, they would accept it, and they would welcome it. But then also, not just shops, are there other retail, other outlets? So we were talking around, you know, market stalls, around um, allotments, around any sort of other access around there. So we've got these four key areas, and, you know, Every time we talk to people and we come up with other ideas, we've got these 48 key other action points that we are trying to address and we're still growing because it's one of those things that the more you talk to people and they come up with ideas, then it's really fabulous. 
one of the things that we wanted to look at was actually uh, where is, oh no, actually I've gone past the slide, sorry, one second, let me just go back. Okay, so when it came to increasing the registration, obviously midwives and health visitors are the, the key people there. Um, but actually there are lots of other people who could talk about it. And I just want to just mention something that Hannah mentioned that the midwives and health visitors and GPs need to sign the form. But actually there's also a box on the form that says you need to have given advice because it's not just signing the form it's actually giving advice around healthy eating or healthy lifestyles or something like that so what we're trying to work with and I met with the health visitor managers and we have uh, spoken at their um, their Birmingham wide conference is actually um, whether other people could fill, help fill in the form and give the advice and so actually the health visitor can then just sign the form or the GP so we're working with the midwives and the health visitors and the family support workers but actually we what we thought about is all these other people that have contact with uh, women or the parents who are or may be eligible for Healthy Start vouchers. So a lot of work with housing associations and particularly now uh, they do a lot of financial outreach, financial inclusion. We have a child poverty action group uh, within Birmingham. So we're working through the Child Poverty Commission there. Um, the eligibility for Healthy Start vouchers is pretty similar, if not exactly the same, for the eligibility for the free childcare offer, particularly for two years old, but also actually um, when we start going for three years old, early years set as nursery primary schools, those children who are eligible for the pupil premium in uh, primary schools was the child at the primary school age because they will be uh, over four years old they're not eligible but actually if they've got younger siblings they will be eligible so we've talked to the primary school head teacher forum and the nursery head teacher forum and I actually say you know you identify children who are eligible for pupil premium well actually the next step is if they've got younger children talk to them about the Healthy Start vouchers. And then we thought about GPs and dentists, and particularly dentists, because they've been trying to incentivize to try and uh, work with, um, see, get children to be registered with a dentist uh, at least by two years old, if not by six months. And so actually what we thought was, well, actually, is this something that we need to do citywide or do we actually try to identify the hotspots of underclaim? And so whilst we have this overall target of 70 percent claim for Birmingham, um, you know, our feeling was, you know, that's not 70 percent across every part of the city. So we contacted um, the Healthy Start unit and said, actually, can we have it broken down by postcode? And we supplied uh, the postcodes and they broke it down by postcode area, which I'll show you in a minute. We have been working with the local uh, Department of Work and Pensions because from their angle, they'll know people who are eligible um, because of claiming the right benefits. And actually the next argument is, well, if they've got children, you should tell them about this. So we're trying to do that and then trying to mobilize the city councillors and MPs as well because they will see people uh, on a regular basis um, who will come to them claim you know because they've got problems with universal credit hardship payments income all of those sorts of things so do they know about it so the hotspots one we did this map so we asked for these uh, postcodes and they showed us the uh, breakdown by the area. Uh, so some of the postcodes go outside. So you've got the black line is the outline of Birmingham and the, the wards. And then I just rag rated it and I just said, well, actually, if there's less than 20 people in an area they're not claiming, we'll cast that as green. Uh, uh, amber is 21 to 50 people, but in an area where there's 50 or more people not claiming, uh, we'll code that red. And then when you start looking at it, you go, okay. When we start looking at hotspots, what we're really talking about is, if you look at Birmingham, the the, north, the, the bit that's in the top right, uh, that is amber, for those of you who don't know, Birmingham is Sutton Coldfield, which is like posh. So, and then the other part that we've got uh, down to sort of like the bottom to the left, uh, where it's amber is actually around the university, Birmingham University and uh, Harborne and that kind of area. So actually, um, we looked at that and then what we did because we had it we actually looked at the underclaim per postcode area so the minimum is seventeen thousand, 
to 72,000 based on these two vouchers per per child per per eligible beneficiaries per year. And we actually talk to the councillors about it and go, well, you're a councillor for a ward, you know, which postcode? This is the underclaim in your area. We need to do something about it. You keep telling me you've got children and families in poverty in your area. This is a really easy uh, way that actually we, and it's new money. It's not that it's coming from the city council, it's coming from national government. We also then wanted to work with the, reg with the retailers. So we got the database from the Department of Health of all the retailers who are or have been registered to accept Healthy Start vouchers. And we segmented them into these areas, currently accepting, used to accept, but stopped, registered, but never accepted. And then we broke them down by various areas. And then we uh, sent out some uh, people from public health who went and spoke to these retailers and asked them about their experiences, thoughts, recommendations, why you know if they're currently using them brilliant but what would they need to help if they used to use them but stopped why did they stop and those who registered but never accepted why have you never accepted a healthy start voucher and actually look to see what we could do to help support um, the retailers so um, Helen's mentioned some of these but one of the key things is um, there's nothing to advertise. So we would know from the database that they were registered to accept Healthy Start vouchers. And one of the things that we asked the public health interns when they went out was, is there anything that says? And then on some shops, there'd be a tiny little window sticker, but that is it. So actually, if you're new to the area and you rock up, how would you know that they accept the vouchers? They also, the retailers just said, well, you know, because there was still this idea that it was just eligible for milk. And so actually sometimes they accepted it for milk, but wouldn't accept it for other uh, other things. And then they talked about staff turnover and staff training. So in some of the shops, there's one person who's usually the owner who knows about it, but other people didn't know about it. They said they preferred a card. And what was quite interesting was I did a presentation just recently up in Scotland and um, they uh, were going on to the card and a lot, there was a kickback from there saying they didn't want the card. And then also they wait, so they've got 150 vouchers to claim, so 150 pounds. So if they have a very low um, uptake of the vouchers or claim of the vouchers, it takes them a long time to claim and then they stop with that. So we've been working with the Association of Convenience Stores, um, which Helen mentioned to try and do that nationally. But what we've also done in Birmingham is look particularly around the fruit and veg markets. So what we found was a lot of the traders were there. So now what they can do is they can accept the voucher and then use it immediately against payment for rent for their stall and they will be centrally claimed. So actually they will do far more there. We're working with local wholesalers, so particularly about East End Foods, uh, which is an Asian food company, Cash and Carry. So we're using their networks and actually trying to access through the, um, the Asian um, shopkeepers and then also the Asian community, uh, which uh, has a lower uptake, and we will do that. We want to, in the end, we'll say, well, actually, why do not people not use them and why is there a drop off when they get older? It's actually, well, do they do people know about how to cook cauliflowers, how to cook fruit and veg? And so we're linking into uh, community groups around, particularly around how do you use this to increase the fruit and veg? And then we've done sort of a basic thing for other people and say, actually, you know, you don't have to assess eligibility, which is what um, Helen was saying, that actually, talk to families who may be eligible. So families eligible for pupil premium, the families eligible for um, the early years education, or just talk to all families and actually then give them the form or, and, and help them fill it in because as Helen said, the forms are rejected. So actually, you know, the form isn't that complicated. There's only two sides of A4, which is a lot simpler than lots of other forms, but actually, get the parent, you know, help the parent fill it, it in and then actually make sure that they've got the link so they know about signing the form. And then the other thing that we're trying to get people to do is get far more shops to register. So if you're in a local uh, nursery or um, school and you know the families nearby, go to the, the shop on the parade or this, that and the other, find out, well, are they registered? And if not, 
actually get them to register. We're also developing some posters and uh, tent cards as well, which hopefully East End Foods are going to fund the printing of, and we'll do a big campaign with um, the retailers and the schools and stuff, so they'll have some information to give out. And um, if you want to know more, then please do email me or um, you know follow, follow us and whatever, and we're happy to share some of the ideas and thoughts that uh, we've used within Birmingham. So um, happy to answer any questions later on, but now I'm going to hand over to Laura. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sandra. That was great and also prompt a lot of good questions. So if you're not following the attendee chat, I definitely recommend um, reading through it because a lot of people are asking some quite detailed things and it's helping pick out some of the um, more the, the greater nuances of this scheme that we all know and love. Um, <laughs> um, so now we're going to move over to uh, Laura and Amy. Okay. Hi, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me okay. So um, thanks so much, Sandra. That was a really good presentation. And we've just been like frantically scribbling down because you've given us loads of ideas as well. So it's been really good. Uh, we're both from the public health team at Leicester City Council. And we're going to talk to you a bit about what, we're, what we've been doing in Leicester over the past few months around Healthy Start. My name is Laura Carvel. And I'm Amy Kernock. So uh, for those of you that may not know much about Leicester, um, we're a really richly ethnically and culturally diverse city, which makes Leicester a very unique place. Um, but we also have lots of challenges around um, deprivation. So the map on the right hand side of the slide. So you can see there's lots of red areas, um, which is the most deprived quintile and three out of four residents. So 70% of 75% uh, of residents live in the most 40% uh, deprived areas nationally. And we also have a big problem with child poverty. Um, actually, that figure is not quite right. It's estimated, estimated that around 30,000 children uh, li are living in the city um, are living in poverty so we have got a real big challenge and that's why Healthy Start is a priority for us and also in Leicester um, we're involved with Feed in Britain and we've got a Feed in Leicester pilot which is about um, you know addressing childhood poverty and food poverty. So as Laura was saying, due to the high levels of deprivation in the city and the food poverty picture, there are loads of vulnerable families that need the Healthy Start vouchers and our uptake does reflect this. So 72% is the current figure, um, which is good because it's above the national average and the regional average. But we do still feel that 28% of potentially our families missing out just isn't good enough and um, so we're still working on promoting the vouchers through as many networks as possible and we do have 148 retailers in the city that accept the vouchers um, and included within those retailers are our Leicester and our Beaumont market traders. So this is quite a new thing. So in uh, February of this year, we launched a pilot for Leicester Market to start accepting Healthy Start vouchers. So as Amy said, we've got two markets. We've got one big, busy market in the city centre, and we've got a smaller one um, in an area of the city called Beaumont Lees, which is a very deprived area. So we've got two um, traders accepting vouchers at the city centre market, and we've got one in Beaumont Lees. So when we launched the pilot in February 2018, we worked with a local charity called the Real Junk Food Cafe, and they kind of use surplus food and make it into that really tasty meal. So they were there doing some cooking up some nice fresh food, and we were talking to as many people as we could to kind of promote that, that vouchers were now accepted here. You can see on the second picture, that's one of the traders in the city centre that accepts the vouchers. And she's got a little sign um, that she can put wherever she wants just to make it you know, known that she accepts the vouchers. Although, as you can see, it is very small. So we're currently working on what we can do to make it a bit more visible. So um, the reason why we wanted to do this was because we felt it would be a really positive it would give families um, more options of where to use their vouchers and it would also be really good promotion for the market and you know local business so um, we did when we started set a target of around 30 vouchers being accepted per week um, and that was based on other areas that had you know would accepting them in the market but 
we actually have found that we haven't accepted as many vouchers as we originally wanted to. We've had 57 vouchers accepted across the market since February. Um, and based on our 30 per week target, that's obviously nowhere near. Um, but we do feel that it has still been a positive experience. The traders have really enjoyed taking part and other traders have seen that the, that some traders are doing it. So they're interested in taking part as well. Um, and the number is slowly growing. But as we've already discussed, you know, throughout the other presentations, there are challenges around just general awareness of the scheme. And so I do think that helps explain why, you know, we've maybe not achieved as many vouchers being accepted in the market as we originally hoped to. Um, this pilot at the market is part of the Feed in Leicester pilot that I mentioned earlier, and that's all about addressing food poverty in Leicester. So before kind of we started thinking a little bit differently about what we could do here, the kind of existing and traditional networks for promotion, as with other areas, I'm sure everybody's the same, that we rely heavily, heavily on our health visitors and midwives to promote the scheme. And they're obviously doing a brilliant job, as in Leicester, as we've seen, we are above the national average. Um, so also children, young people and family centres are involved uh, because a lot of our health visitors are based in those centres. Um, and we have also been trying to look at new ways of promoting the scheme, a bit like Birmingham and thinking a bit more outside the box. And Amy's going to talk to you about those now. So, yeah, as Laura's just said, in addition to the market pilot and the fantastic existing networks of communication that are already in place, we've been exploring some new ways of promoting the vouchers. Um, so during the pilot launch, we work with uh, food banks across the city to support them in promoting the Healthy Start vouchers. So basically, they can signpost appropriate families uh, to the vouchers. They uh, can display posters and staff members have expressed that they're comfortable having those conversations with families who use the food banks. Um, our nurseries and early years uh, settings, so schools as well that we work with, um, have also received information on the vouchers through various newsletters, mail outs, and some have expressed, and I've also seen some of their displays that they've done around Healthy Start vouchers. So they've linked them in really nicely to themes around healthy eating, if they've been doing something around like sugar swaps or change for life, um, just to enable that conversation around the vouchers. Um, and another new network that we're exploring currently is with the job centres in the city. Um, so we are updating information on their district provision tool to include information on Healthy Start. So again, it's a new opportunity so that work coaches can identify appropriate families um, and they can have a conversation around the vouchers as well um, so and we've also included um, conversations around the vouchers with dental practices uh, our pharmacy network as well and we just basically try and sow the healthy start seed wherever we go so another uh, new method of promotion is a video a little video that we've made which you should be able to see so it's literally just a 30 second video that shows a quick snippet of information around the vouchers. So we've shared this with as many partners as possible and ones who have got social media or TV screens have shared this video just to promote it to families. And it's just a nice sort of quick information about what the vouchers are and where they are accepted. There you go. going on to the next one there we go so yeah although we've carried out loads of hard work uh, into increasing the uptake of vouchers in the city we are yet to see uh, an increase generally so we're hoping that these next steps will help to increase the uptake so um, next steps are to develop some maps to highlight the retailers that accept the vouchers in the city as we've noticed there are some discrepancies on the website so sometimes when we type in the postcode not all of the retailers come up some of the retailers might not necessarily be aware that they're accepting the vouchers so we're hoping that the creation of these maps will allow children young people family centers midwives health visitors to break down the barriers to families to say you are eligible for the vouchers or you can apply to find out if you're eligible for the vouchers and then these are the local shops that you can then use these vouchers in so prior to doing the maps we are going to go out and do an audit of the retailers first within our central cluster in the city so we're going to have conversations around if they actually do accept the vouchers if they're displaying their little window sticker 
perhaps if there's ways that they can promote it um, to just make sure that we are sort of in communication with them and we can also hopefully iron out any issues and gain some feedback as well and we're also as Laura mentioned earlier going to be creating some, some new marketing marketing materials to promote the scheme um, at the uh, market so we're going to be getting some nice big colorful tablecloths and hopefully some banners just to sort of raise awareness and hopefully increase that uptake at the market so that's it from us this morning and um, so i hope you found that useful um, and we certainly have listening to the other presentations if anybody i know we've got the q a now but um we have put both myself and amy's contact details on the screen so if you want to get in touch with us outside of the webinar then please feel free to do so Okay, thank you. I'll pass back to Maddie now. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Amy. Um, really interesting to hear what's going on in the different areas. Um, so we're going to go over to Q&A now. Um, my colleague, Simon, is kind of helping collect questions, and he's also helping answer questions um, in the chat. Um, so the first one that we'd seen um, uh, from a bit earlier was about paper forms. So maybe Helen, you might have any, um, if you've got any info about this, but someone was just at saying that there can be some difficulty in getting hold of the paper forms basically to give out to people. So not necessarily filling them out. Do you have anything from that you could add to that, Helen? Um, you can download the form from, form from the website pretty easily. So you can just print it off from there if you want to, or from a, actually from the general government website, you can download the form. Um, you can get copies if you write to them for your local area as well. Um, so if you know, you know, if you're willing to get put some effort into getting hold of them, it's not too difficult. Um, okay, great, good one. Um, we're also hearing from a number of people that they love the video um, that Laura and Amy made, uh, and um someone had the idea of maybe putting this up on gp and or hospital screens which is a really good idea um and wondering if it could be modified or shared in any way so um i think that laura and amy said they made it in powerpoint if that's right laura amy do you want to chime in on that about a little bit more about the video yeah um so the video was just made uh and a still PowerPoint presentation, then there's an option where you can save it in video format. So we can definitely share that um, and we can share the format of the presentation where it can be edited as well. And then, yeah, it can be shared in GPs, pharmacies, sort of anywhere that's got TV screens. That's absolutely great. Yeah, it's already been shared. By, it's via the CCG, you did it, wasn't yes. it? So um, any GP with a, a screen has got access to the video. I just don't think we've got a clear answer on exactly how many GPs are displaying that, um, but it has gone out through the CCG. Oh, that's great. That's a really good idea um, to, yeah, to display it on the screens and to share it widely. So thanks for that. Um, Emma was wondering, have you, do you have any images of the banner that you've made? I think that's for Laura and Amy as well. Oh, is that, sorry, is that a question for us? We haven't made the banners yet. Oh, it's, um, is that for the market stores, for the, like the tablecloth things we were saying? Oh, okay. Yes. You know, I can, I can, no, so we haven't got them made um yet but the kind of branding you were it's basically just going to be like healthy start branding um but we haven't got like the artwork designed yet although i can see from the attendee chat that other areas have um sent have, have already made banners so it'd be great to see what artwork they've done it looks like we've got some messages saying people are prepared to share artwork which would be really useful um but yeah, yeah we've not had yet Okay, great. I think I might have also just misread some of the questions. I think Emma was saying that she was willing to share her artwork, not oh, that she was looking to. <laughs> so I mixed up that one. Sorry about that. But it sounds like there's people are really willing to share these resources. And because it's common branding among Healthy Star, it works out quite well, actually. Um, um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Someone's just asking about branding guidelines for making marketing materials. Um, I am not sure if there's any branding guidelines. If any of the other presenters wanted to jump in on that, it sounds like a lot of people have just been kind of taking some of the images from the site and to create their own branding okay. since so there are branding guidelines um because <laughs> we've got 
and also working with the Association of Convenience Stores who've done um, a PowerPoint video for their, their retailers to get the retailers signing. So there are branding guidelines, um, but they're quite easy. So if you just email the Healthy Start unit and ask their branding line, guidelines, they'll send them to you. But um, they're quite happy for people to do stuff. It's just making sure um, about the font and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, there are. Okay, very helpful. Thanks, Sandra. So um, I take back what I said earlier. There are brand guidelines, <laughs> as I said at the beginning. Not an expert on this, so we have the presenters here, um, and you can email them. And um, the email address for the Healthy Start team has been shared in the chat as well. Um, there was another question someone had about um, anyone has developed any different a different delivery scheme for the actual vitamins. Previously, we've used children's centers. However, we're moving towards a potential postal delivery. Has anyone else done this? Um, do, have any of the speakers done anything around delivery of the vitamins that they'd want to chime in on? Um, I know a lot of areas are trying different things. In Northern Ireland, it's always been a postage system, actually. Um, and I was recently down in uh, Devon, and they were talking about moving to a postal system as well. Um, but I think the majority of people are still using children's centers and pharmacies in their local area. Okay. Sandra, Laura, Amy, any, anything you want to add on that one? Uh, I suppose the Birmingham being quite a urban place, we um, we usually use the pharmacy route, but also in Birmingham, um, Public Health made the decision that we have a universal offer, so it's not just um, the, um, the targeted support. So yes, it's but it is through the pharmacy network, and um, we have. We're a big city, so we've got lots of pharmacies. Yeah. Um, and Sandra, oh, why are you there? oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Just about the vitamins. Um, so we did have a um, a group, like a steering group, almost that was for the city and for the county about trying to increase vitamin uptake. Um, we haven't met for a while, but we are due to meet again soon. Um, and one of the things that we were looking at was about getting the vitamins into children's centres because they aren't at the moment. Um, but yeah, that's not happened yet. So just not really anything to add, but I just wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, Sandra, there's a question for you. Um, Rosemary said, Sandra's postcode map is brilliant. How much work was it to create this? And would it be useful to share the program slash formula? Um, thank you very much for that. Um, it was it was quite easy actually. What I did was um, got a list of the postcodes that are Birmingham postcodes and sent them through to the Healthy Start unit. They then sent me back an Excel spreadsheet that showed um, the the uptake um, in numbers of people um, of in each postcode area, which I then converted to. Um, percentages and also under claim I was just saying if you are going to do a map because I did one which was about percentage uptake and actually it's almost the opposite because in in the areas in the um, in the north of the city Sutton Coalfield which um, um, don't have very many people that are eligible so maybe in one postcode area uh, there was something like eight people that are eligible and four have taken them up. So you would say, well, that's 50% uptake. And so actually that should be red. Uh, but in actual fact, it's only four people that haven't taken them up. And we, you know, so it's actually, it's like with all things, you need to be careful. I then gave it to the public health intelligence team who are used to doing um, all, all the mapping kind of stuff. And they just converted the Excel spreadsheet into, uh, and I told them how, you know, we then did it on percentages and also did it on the numbers of people uh, under claiming. And the numbers of people under claiming is the, is the more relevant one. So, um, so it was quite simple as far as I was concerned. I got the information from one lot and gave it to someone else who did the, did the map. So the public health intelligence team are probably um, um, the best people to go for because they're used to doing the mapping. Great. Yeah, that's really useful to know, I think, um, because I think it, it's such a um, sharp way of presenting the information to a variety of people. It's easy to read. So it seems like there's a lot of interest in that as well. Um, one person asked, can banners, posters, videos be produced centrally or brought together in a central place or website? Um, I don't know, Helen, do you have anything to add on that about kind of the central location of, 
of materials or, or Sandra and, or Laura, Amy, did you guys find anything that was useful to you when you're doing this or was it more useful to just make your own? Um, I don't think there was a central site. Obviously, Healthy Start still has its own website um, where they provide some information. Um, but at the moment, I think it's pretty much uh, people doing their own stuff in different areas of the country. But it would be very interesting to think if perhaps sustainable food cities might be able to act as a host for uh, some of the information. Yeah. Um, I think that that's definitely been a conversation on our end between food power and um, sustainable food cities and other people who are working on this issue nationally about there's um, seems to be a, a clearer and clearer need for some sort of materials on this as um, many people see that the uptake isn't what it um, could be or should be I'd say. Um, let's see any other questions? Um, Ah, someone suggested having a professionals only area where all this great work and artwork or materials could be shared. That seems like a really good idea. Maybe that's something that from this webinar we'll take away back to some of the meetings we're having with other national partners um, to see what would be the best way to go about this and having a place where this could be stored for people to access since it does take a lot, like as we've seen, there's great stuff being created at the local level and it'd be great to either share that or add to it and have some way so that people don't need to replicate um, fantastic work that's already being done, if it's um, able to be shared, of course. Um, someone put this out for all of the presenters, potentially. They said, lots of our parents visit the Children's Center and pay for vitamins. They seem reluctant to claim for the Healthy Start program. Any tips? Does anyone, any tips Sorry. from the presenters on that one? <laughs> Sorry, I think I might have um, misheard the question, but so this is where everybody's getting them universally or where people are having to buy them, people don't want to be seen to be getting them free. Is that the, it's a stigma problem, is it? Um, people feel it's, it sounds like a great question about stigma, but yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'm sure children's centres can think of creative ways of working with the families that they, they have who visit them, they all get to know them. I'm sure there's a way around that where they can uh, provide vitamins in exchange for the voucher without it being very public. Uh, yeah. There are some issues around stigma still, and I think one of the uh, reasons perhaps to, to think again about digitization, maybe to reduce stigma associated with the use of vouchers. Some families have said that if they go into a retailer that's, and staff aren't particularly used to them, that they might get questions shouted across the store, what's this voucher for? And that can make them feel very uh, uncomfortable. Um, so certainly stigma is something people have to think about. Yeah. Um, with with the, the vitamins, I know that there was a, an issue recently about the vitamins, about the, the formulation of the vitamins, which then meant that some health visitors were reluctant or less keen on giving them out because um, of the formulation was um, different, which um, was a bit was a bit of a shame but um what we found is that because we've got the universal offer within birmingham that actually there's so much marketing around like the multivitamins or all these other kinds of vitamins that somehow because the healthy start vitamins only contain some of them and not all of them that actually um it's not seen quite you know it's quite as good as the as the um the um I was going to say, um, what, I can't remember the name of the main brands of the other other vitamins. So I think it's about it comes against the competing issues there. And also you then have that problem about they, um, they only need to t take the vitamins every so often. And so actually, you know, people forget, whereas um, we have, a, you know, whereas if you if with those other vitamin tablets that they take, they take them more regularly. But, um, but yeah, I think that's some of the issues that we've found. Yeah, um, we've, we've just run over a few minutes on the webinar. So I'm just gonna answer a few of these final questions that I, I can um, go to. Someone asked, um, does anyone know how the Healthy Start vouchers map is managed on the official webpage? When creating maps at Good Food Oxford, many of the places were out of date, were unaware of the scheme. My hunch is that in terms of out of date or unaware of the scheme might be due to staff turnover or the store changing hands. From what um, I've heard from other groups is that when retailers sign up to join, to accept Healthy Start vouchers, they can choose whether or not they'd like to be on the map, and therefore the map is gonna be incomplete from the get-go, basically, um, which I think is one of the things that we'll definitely be putting forth in the consultation um, when that kicks off. Um, in terms of, so like in many ways, I think the more that you start to dig into Healthy Start vouchers, the more you kind of see the um, cracks in the system. So. 
it's a great time for a consultation. Um, in terms of access to the slides and video once the webinar is over, we so we record all of our webinars and then we put them up on our website. And that um, so you can what you can do is you can watch the slides and hear the audio at the same time. Um, it's food power. It's www.sustainweb.org slash foodpower slash resources. And I'll put that link up in just a minute. Or Sam's going to put that link up right now. Great. Um, in terms of looking at vitamin uptake in a webinar, we don't have any plans to do that as of yet. But um, this has been one of our most popular webinars we've hosted so far. And so I think that there'll be a lot more action happening around Healthy Start vouchers. I'd encourage anyone who's interested to know more about kind of next steps, keep in touch about the consultation and hear about other resources to join the Food Power newsletter on our website. Um, as well as the Sustainable Food Cities newsletter. They do have some stuff that's similar, but mostly they they kind of focus on different things. So it's a good, really good way to stay up to date on the issues that are related to um, sustainable food and food poverty. Um, one other person asked about accessing the promotional images. It sounds like emailing the um, Healthy Start team would be the best way to get the branding guidelines. And I imagine that could potentially also come with images, but at least they would know what's the best way to get those. Um, Sophia, who works at Sustainable Food Cities, um, said she's happy to collect existing promotional materials um, and share them with anyone interested. Um, we can start with everything that's mentioned here and then move from there. Um, Sophia uh, also works at Sustain with Simon and I, um, but just on the Sustainable Food City thing. So I think we'll be having a conversation later this afternoon about how to collect all this information and get it back out to everyone so it can be used. Um, I think that is about it so far. Um, it seems like there's a lot coming out about consistent, like as Lisa's mentioned, um, the need to have consistent centrally produced resources um, in order for everyone to be using things um, at the same, uh, in, in the same ways. And it seems like it'd be really useful to a lot of people. So um, we'll definitely take that away. Thank you to everyone who has joined so far. I'll just let you know that on the Food Power website, um, we have a list of resources. I've listed them here, but what we've discovered is that you can't actually click on the links. So if you go to that um, to the Food Power website, we have all of these here links to speakers, as well as a number of other resources that are um, applicable to Healthy Start and related topics. Um, and if you have any other questions, please feel free to get in touch with us either at Sustainable Food Cities or Food Power. Um, we'll leave the chat on for just another few minutes here because I know some people are like to trade contact information, which is one of, we think one of the best things about these webinars is helping link people up. We're working on this across different areas. So we'll leave the chat on for a few minutes. Um, but thank you so much to Helen, Sandra, Laura, and Amy for joining us today. Those were really fantastic presentations. Um, and thank you to everyone else who has joined. <laughs>